Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am so excited to have with us here today, Darren Saul. Darren is a photographer who started heavily utilizing social media and podcasting to build his business and was so amazed with the results, he never looked back. He is now a very active social media marketing practitioner and podcaster. And I already got to be interviewed by Darren and I will tell you, he is an amazing podcaster. Um, and he consults with organizations to help them get serious business results, integrating social media and podcasting into their marketing strategy. And he says social media is not a nice to have anymore. It's a must have. So, Darren, thank you so much for being on my podcast today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Yeah. So before. Before we dive in to getting some tips from you on social media, I'd love to hear your backstory. Um, yeah. How did you go from wherever you were, where were you, to where you are today? <laughs> awesome. Well, I mean, I've done loads of different things. Um, you know, I also work as a recruiter. I've, always, I've been a recruiter for 20 years as well in the corporate world. Um, and I do a lot of work as well as a photographer and social media marketer and podcaster. And I suppose my journey has always been, as soon as I've ever found something that I've really fallen in love with, I'm the type of personality that just goes all in. You know, I'm, I dive right in. I go all through the details. I research, I study, I spend countless hours diving into whatever it is I need to understand. And then usually come out of that process really even more passionate than I was before because I've learned a lot. And I want to share that knowledge with other people. And that's, that's the hook. Usually it starts that way. And then I say, well, how can I leverage what I've just learned, share it with other people and maybe, you know, get some revenue out of it as well, you know, make it a bit of a business or a side hustle or whatever. So everything I've ever done has always been through the same journey and photography and social media and podcasting was exactly the same. So I started working as a photographer about eight, nine years ago. Um, originally I did a lot of photography work at school, in the dark room and I had a ball and then I kind of left it and then I thought, okay, I need a hobby. And I decided to go buy some kit cameras from our local Harvey Norman. That was actually JB Hi-Fi, which is our technology store. Bought a couple of Nikons with some lenses, started photographing and I just fell in love. And again, I went all in. And I was on the streets doing street photography. I was doing courses. I was practicing. I was editing and processing. And then that was really amazing. I started building my business. And at a certain point, I thought, you know what? The world's changed. And I need to find a way to stand out as a photographer. I need to find a way to market myself better. And, you know, as I, I saw marketing uh, methods and strategies changing around me. And I, a good friend of mine actually gave me some tips and advice and I started listening to Gary V and a lot of other people who market uh, you know market with social media and digital media so well and I just did a lot of analysis and study and dived in and was watching all sorts of people on YouTube and listening to podcasts and then I started utilizing social media and podcasting to market my photography business and that you know over a certain amount of time I got better and better and better and as I always say, creativity is a muscle. You have to kind of do the, do the thousand hours to, to get better and to refine your skill and develop that muscle and strengthen that muscle. And I just started getting great results and you know, business through my podcast and through my social media marketing strategy. And I'll, I'll add as well the fact that I think a great podcast, as you know, is really another piece of... Um, the puzzle within your wider social media content strategy. A podcast for podcast sake is fantastic. And I do it because I love it, you know, but I might not be able to sell my podcast for a hundred million dollars like Joe Rogan. 
about. You never know, you Darren. Never know. You've got you, you you you've got the accent Joe Rogan does not have. That sexy accent. <laughs> well, thank you. You never know what happens. I'll never say no. But, That's um, right. You know, it's really about allowing me to put content of value and share my personality and my style and my authenticity and my story with my audience every day or every second day or every week, however often I do a podcast episode. And that becomes a wider, another piece of my wider social media content strategy. So that's why I lump social media and podcasting together as such incredibly strong tools to help people build their brand and get real business results. And that just became, again, I became so passionate about it and I learned so much that now I thought, all right, I'm going to leverage what I've just learned. And now I'm starting to consult with small organizations as to how to do the same thing. And I do training courses for how to podcast, how to do social media. Um, I do consultations, strategy sessions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So my journey has always been whatever I've been passionate about, dive in, learn, enjoy it. And then I thought, all right, great. I really love it. What can I do with it? Let's leverage. How can I use that knowledge and teach somebody else? How can I share what I've learned? And it just, it just keeps on going over and over again. I'll probably do the same thing for the rest of my life. <laughs> and how much fun is that? Because you're constantly learning and growing in, um, you know, one of the many philosophies I have, and it sounds like you have it too, is the best way to really learn something is to teach it to someone else. Oh, I'm so glad you said that. That is so true. You know, I'm, I also work as a, a photography tutor. I do a bit of tutoring for in photography as well. And I can't stress the fact that I've learned so much about photography and refined my own skills through teaching. You know, and it's the same with social media. It's the same with podcasting because it allows you to articulate your process, the psychology behind what you do, because sometimes you don't actually get the time to sit down and, and really map it out and say, what are the steps that I take? Because you just do it. But when you teach it, you have to articulate it, break it down, simplify it and it becomes you know a really methodical process that really allow you to move your skill level from here to here so yeah yeah I, I love that and that's one of the many things that makes you such a very interesting human being uh, that you oh, are constantly learning and that you then take that and teach others yeah. So before we go any further on this, could you share with people where you live, where you're from? Because, yeah. you know, that's where your accent is coming from. Absolutely. So everybody can hear my lovely Australian accent. I'm coming to you from Sydney, um, Australia, in a place called Rose Bay, which is not too far from the famous Bondi Beach. Um, and uh, great here. The weather today is not too bad. I think it's going to be a little bit better later on this afternoon. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, but coming at you from Sydney, Australia, having fun, and it's a great city to be in. I can see the sunshine coming in. Here yeah. it has been. Um, so are you guys just getting ready to go into your, or are you in your spring now? Is that what you're in? Yes, your so spring? We're theoretically, I think, in the first month of our spring. Yeah, and, yeah, and we in, there. And we here in the U.S. are in the first of the fall. Yes. And that's why I'm sitting here in a, in a hoodie and you're in a regular shirt without anything. Cause you're, it's always so, I love talking with people on the opposite side of the world because and no matter what season I'm in, I can fantasize about the season you're in or be happy. I'm not in the season you're in whichever way I'm feeling at the moment. So that's true. thanks for but, sharing that, Darren. But you are and do you your work tiara, with, so that's the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a tiaras for every season. <laughs> <laughs> I <love it. laughs> and I even have a um, Santa hat tiara. Amazing. You've got a collection <laughs> of tiaras. I love it. <laughs> You're like, of course you do. Course I don't even know why do. you shared that with me. <laughs> you, have your, you should have your own branded tiara as well. I'm sure you do. I don't, but that's a great idea. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you for that there. idea. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so back to social media and podcasts. Um, one of the challenges that I had, and I know I'm not alone in this, is I kept thinking, oh, I don't want to do a podcast because it's too much work. 
It's just going to be so much work. And I, that was what just kept going through my head. I was like, there's no way I'm going to do this. I couldn't see past that. So do you hear that a lot? And if so, what do you tell people? Yeah, absolutely. I hear that all the time. And it's really interesting because, you know, maybe two, three years ago, when Zoom wasn't really used as much, um, podcasting was a little bit more complicated because you had to go to the studio, you had to, you know, make sure that sound engineering was right. And if you videoed it, you had to have another video team as well. And that's where it started to get a bit more complicated, but still very easily done once you learned those skills or you've got someone to help you. But nowadays with the technology we're using, particularly in the last, over the last six to 12 months, we've all adopted Zoom as our, you know, principal way of communicating nearly. And it's so easy to do something through Zoom and have a podcast in video and audio form. It's not funny. So it's, again, so we've taken away that technology issue and it's now just more about how you plan the, your process, how you plan your podcast, how you strategize, how you get your guests, all that kind of, you know, the, the other stuff around the technology that's more important. Because with Zoom, you get an audio file and a video file. You take the audio file, you put it into your podcast app, you take the video file, you put it into YouTube. There you go, you've just got two versions of your podcast. That simple. And that's not hard to do at all, you know, half an hour of production. But it's the rest of it that makes the difference. It's the preparation of the episode, the preparation of your guest, how you make your guest feel, um, how you conduct that and facilitate that interview. And then as I say to everybody, it's how you promote the podcast because it's just like a website. If you have the best website and nobody knows it even exists, what's the point? And it's the same thing with your podcast. You have to make sure you promote it properly. Otherwise, nobody even knows it's even there. And all that beautiful knowledge and information and effort and sweat and blood and tears never even sees the, the, the light of day. So it's really not that complicated, but it just takes a little bit of systemization. Um, and I know that you know, you're all about uh, virtual assistance and people helping you, and they can help you in that respect as well to do all that pre-work. So it makes the process really seamless. Literally all I do is the day before um, I'm going to interview somebody, I review all the information that they've submitted to me. I look at all their websites and, you know, listen to anything I want to listen to so I get familiar with them. And then the day of, I just make sure that I'm ready to get on and, and do my thing. Yeah. Um, every, I have a team that does literally everything else. Yep. So when I look back, I think, oh, what was I thinking? I should have jumped into this way before I did. And I'm really thankful that I finally did. Definitely. And actually, you just brought up another great point. A lot of people might be asking themselves, ah, oh, the podcast market is so saturated. There's so many podcasts. Is it even worth starting now? Do I even bother? The answer is yes, absolutely yes. Um, for a couple of reasons. First one is that if you're really dedicated to putting together a podcast and you stick it out, it will bear fruit because a lot of people, most people have podcasts and they never get past episode 17 or 20. They just give up. That's a, that's a known statistic. So if you, if you hang in there and be consistent and build your audience and build those numbers and build those hours, you will already have an incredible chance of breaking through. And again, it's a greater, um, it's a great brand awareness tool for you. you know? And at the same time, the more you do it, the better you get and you know, you start to enjoy it and you have so much fun and you never know where this leads. I love everything that you just said. And another piece of this is I've always loved networking with people, yeah. you know, getting to know people, getting to know about their businesses, how we can work together. And now I'm doing that and creating a podcast at the same time. Yeah. So there's so much synergy. Oh, there is. And the, the, um, Lead generation potential from a podcast is insane because, you know, nowadays it's very hard to, you know, make, you can't make cold calls anymore. You can't do the traditional things we used to do to get in front of people or open up doors. But if I go to somebody and say, I want to put you on my podcast, I want to interview you, the doors open up, the <laughs> Nile, the Nile, was, you know, the river Nile just parts <laughs> and all of a sudden you've got the pathway to the top. Because everybody wants to get on a podcast. And, you know, before you know it, you'll have people being referred to you if you do a good job. 
you have you'll be so busy i booked up nearly a couple of months in advance because everybody wants to jump on a podcast everybody wants to share their story and podcasting now has become it's almost made a resurgence because people are realizing how what an amazing tool it is to share your story out into the world it's free you get on a podcast and you can build awareness for what you do one of the best ways to market yourself so if you create the stage for people to do that you will be so busy and it will bring you brand awareness and lead generation and potential um, business opportunities that you wouldn't have dreamed of. And, you know, my podcast is still very new and I'm already experiencing all of those things. So I, um, another piece of synergy that you mentioned, and then I want to uh, go back and talk about a little bit more to make sure that anybody who has, isn't already doing this, um, isn't already doing a podcast or working in social media on some level really understands the way that all of this, is it called cross market, cross marketing? What's cross the marketing, term to use? Uh, cross fertilization, cross, uh, there's so many different, what would be a good way? Uh, cross, uh, who knows, cross fertilization. <laughs> But all of those things. So what you were talking about, so, so I'll name some of the things like Facebook, YouTube, podcasts, what all do you see that works together? And, and it builds that, like, here's what I think about. Um, I want people to see me everywhere they go. You get on Instagram, they see me. Get on YouTube, they see me. Do want a podcast, they see me. Uh, Facebook, everything else, they see me. And how do you make that happen without spending tons of time? Yeah, so yeah. go, and, Darren. And, <laughs> Solve all that. <laughs> Solved. Easy. There's actually two great points. <laughs> there's two great points you've just mentioned. First of all, you want to be omnipresent. So you want to be on every channel if people go to every channel. But at the same time, remember that not everybody goes to every channel. So if some, your audience, part of your audience might be on Instagram. You have to be there. Part of your audience might be on LinkedIn. You have to be there. Part of your audience might be on, on a podcast or on YouTube. You have to be there as well so they see you because they might not see you everywhere. So you really need to be omnipresent for, two, for those two reasons. Um, and again, once you get used to this, you start to streamline your process, even with your social media. And you do it, like I get up in the morning early because I'm an early riser nowadays, particularly because of my marketing. I get up at 5, 5.30 every morning. And for the first hour, hour and a half, that's my marketing time. And I just dedicate myself. I have my coffee. I dedicate myself to doing all my marketing, making sure that I've got all my social media on the right channels. And a lot of the time I'm cutting and pasting, I'm repackaging or you know, doing things slightly differently, but you don't have to recreate the wheel every single time. It's about repurposing, repackaging and re put, putting a slightly different spin on things as well and recycling because Remember that every time you put something on social media, only a very small percentage of your audience actually sees it. So if you don't repurpose it, you're just wasting you know, that exposure for 90% of your audience if you only ever do it once. So you have to find a way, you find your pattern and you start to, you fall into your groove of, of repurposing, recycling and repackaging. And then you put in new stuff periodically as well. And that just continues like that forever. And that becomes your process. But the key to this is, there's really three keys to this. Consistency is very important. You have to do it every day these days. You have to have variety and you have to have variety in terms of audio content, video content, um, graphic content, photo content, written content. It's got to all be different, long form, short form. And that's where you can become very creative in how you play with all those things and how you take longer pieces of content and chop them up. And you also have to be... Um, you have to give, as I mentioned, variety, consistency, and you have to have quality. You know, you've got to, not quality in terms of the production value, but quality in terms of the messaging and the information you're giving people. Is it something that they're going to use? Is it something that they need? There's no use for me just promoting myself every, every post on social media because people will switch off. But if I give people 90% of the time what they want and 10% of the time a little promotional plug for me, that's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, I, I kind of put the ratio to 20%. One in five promotion, four out of five value for them. And if you can do those three things, value um, or quality, consistency and variety, every single day, 
it becomes part of who you are and the results will be astounding. And you can literally get all of that done in, did you say an hour and a half? Yep, Is it an like Monday through Friday, morning. an hour and a half? Yep. Monday, and even on the weekend, sometimes I do it as well. Yeah. And the reason is, again, yeah, a lot so- of people forget the weekend is that people's attention on social media is even stronger because they're not distracted. So you have to be there at least one day on the weekend, get your messages out there for the people mm-hmm. who are reading content and, and absorbing content on the weekend. Yeah, we actually just did um, a really big uh, spin on Facebook and ran it for a considerable period of time and tested it. And I can tell you, I was surprised, and you probably won't be from what you just said, Sunday afternoon was the number one spot for me. Absolutely. And it's fantastic. Like Sunday afternoon seems to be the time when everybody's had a bit of family time. They're thinking about what they're going to do tomorrow, but they've got a bit of t- downtime and that's when they jump on and they always, you know, they're very active at, at that time of the weekend. I, I, that's interesting that you already knew that. I would never have guessed it. And that's the other thing that I've learned is you can't guess at this stuff. You have to just, like you said, be consistent and do it. Um, do you find that that's one of the biggest problems with people when they think about um, how do I do social media? How do I do podcasts? How do I do um, all of the marketing that you're talking about? Is it that they don't have a system and don't make it consistent? Or is there something else or m- multiple things? There's, there's probably a few things. The first thing is definitely they, they're they not consistent. A lot of people get excited. They're very passionate. They get impulsive. They buy all the great tools. They sign up to everything. And then they just, after a week, <laughs> say, oh, it just disappears. And they get busy with something else. Always happens. I love that. Oh my gosh. I've seen that so many times. Yes. <laughs> happens all the time. You know, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. So, so you have to really be dedicated, you know, because this is a long-term strategy. You know, you don't get results out of social media and marketing in a week or even three months. It can take six to 12 months of repetitive effort to really build a brand and longer. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just starting mm-hmm. in six to 12 months, you know, as mm-hmm. you know. So I've been doing mm-hmm. this for quite some time you know, probably a couple of years now, two, three years, and only now I'm starting to really start to break in. So it takes time. So consistency mm-hmm. is absolute key and you have to be religious with your, your um, uh, activity, religious every single day. I always say it's like brushing your teeth. You've got to do it every <laughs> single day. You know? And the other mm-hmm. thing is, the other roadblock for a lot of people is they, they can sometimes be a little fearful of putting themselves out there exposing themselves you know that's a really i'm raising my hand if you're not watching the video i'm raising my hand that was me in the beginning i'm like people are going to see this old gray-haired woman with a tiara on and go i'm never working with her yeah yeah but you know what that becomes your becomes your signature becomes your your point of difference it becomes your authentic self and that's beautiful because people we want that we want connect with other human beings we don't want everything to be vanilla you know so we like that and the key to people the key to doing this is just to start small don't you know you don't have to take over the world in in one day just start small put out little bits of content get used to it build that develop that muscle um get start to have fun start to get creative and you get more confident with what you do and you see a couple of likes and a couple of comments we know that wasn't so bad Let's try something else. And before you know it, you have an audience. People are waiting every morning. I, there's some people in my audience. I know every single morning within a half an hour, they're liking or commenting my stuff because they're obviously searching. Mm-hmm. So what's Darren got today? What, what, what am I going to, what, what can I learn from today? Yes. So they look for you. And I do the same with other people that I follow. So you start to go into mm-hmm. that pattern and you expect to have that for you every day. So you have to feed your audience every day once you create them. So there's two things, really. It's just I, that um, is yeah. great advice right there. Let's yeah. just really sink in on that one every day, because then you have people who are hungry for it. They're waiting for you. Exactly. They're looking for you. They get up in the morning, they jump on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, and they type in your name. What's what's Darren done today? What's Kathy done today? Or what's whoever else? Done mm-hmm. What can I learn? Because that might be their time for learning and for you know setting their tone mm-hmm. for the day. A lot of people do that stuff in the morning. So if you're there and you show up, bang. 
And you know, Darren, I have to say, I never even thought about that as a strategy, but that's exactly what I do every morning. Every morning I look to see what, what's the new podcast episode that's out. Yeah, exactly. I want to, I want to absorb it. Yeah. 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 What do I do in the morning? So, I sorry, I interrupted you. I know yeah. you had more to share, but I wanted to, I wanted to go back to that one because I was like, ding, ding, ding. Yes. I know. So true. I love it. And I mean, what's the first thing I do in the morning? I check my emails. I check all my social media. I check my bank account. I check my podcast, <laughs> the new podcasts that have come out. I check uh, my diary. You know, that's my process and everybody's doing the same thing. And that's the time when the tension is great. So that's when you have to be ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so true. And of course, during the day, the same happens during the day for some. Everybody's habits are different, but um, the key is you have to be there at some point every single day. And for the most part, Darren, the other there's two other things that I really think are beautiful about this whole process you're talking about. One is it's basically free. Huh. Yeah, basically free. You know, you might want to. And I mean, you can in- spend. You can spend thousands, millions on marketing, or you can do this for free. You can, you can. A, a interesting point there. I mean, on certain platforms, the organic reach and the, um, the, 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 uh, the efficacy is much stronger. On some other platforms, you can, it can help you to spend a little bit of marketing budget on some ads because the organic reach is not as great. So for example, Facebook and Instagram now is becoming very saturated. And even if you want to spend sometimes play around with $5 a day, $5 US a day, um, posting or boosting some stuff to people that like your page or people that know you, know, like, and trust you, that, that makes sure that you get your messages out to your target audience regularly. But for example, on LinkedIn or on TikTok or on other platforms, go for your life. The organic reach is incredible and you don't have to spend a cent. So it's very low cost. And compared to, you know, spending money on billboards or TV commercials or newspaper ads or whatever, oh my God, you're saving a fortune and you're getting, and you're reaching many more people. Yeah. And most of that stuff doesn't even work anymore. And that doesn't work anymore. That's I'm, the whole point. Yeah. Especially during COVID time, nobody's even traveling. So they're not going to see a billboard. Yep. hundred percent. Nobody's going to click on everything. We're scared to click on a banner ad. God knows what's going to happen. What, what virus is going to come to my computer? You know, I don't want to touch it. So the, like the, it's all about attention and attention's on social media. And it's going to be like that for mm-hmm. a long time. So that's mm-hmm. where, where you have to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the other thing that I was thinking about was um, the, and I, again, I don't know the right term for this, but I am piggybacking on your audience. You're piggybacking on my audience and we're okay. spreading it faster to, to people I could never even, I don't know anybody. Well, I do know one or two other people in Australia, but that's it. Yep, absolutely. And, I, love and yeah, I don't know how many people you know in the US, but I know millions probably. Absolutely. Right, more than me. <laughs> so, yeah. And you can't, I mean, the amount of money it would cost to expand that quickly would be amazing, a really high amount compared to this because you, and it's that third party, it's you, your followers that already love you. And you say, Hey, I think you should love Kathy too. And it's me with my followers who already love me. And I say, Hey, you should love Darren too. So true. And you know, for me, that that's, you just hit the nail on the head. Collaboration is key here. Um, and that's why podcasts are so fantastic because they allow you to collaborate and tap into other people's audiences and all the other benefits that come along from collaboration as well. I mean, you learn so much when you collaborate, you get so many ideas, other opportunities come to you when you collaborate and you have so much fun collaborating with other people. (laughs) So much fun. And fun is my number one value. Fun is my number one value. (laughs) Doing everything by yourself all the time is boring. So collaboration (laughs) is amazing. And, you know, the more you give and the more you collaborate, the more that you get. So you've hit, you've hit the nail on the head. That's such an important point. And people really have to think that way. Um, and j- even just for pure exposure, you cannot beat it. Mm, you really can't. Exposure. That's the, yeah. that's the word I was looking for, exposure. You so you mentioned start small. So I'd like to explore two things with you. One is let's talk about 
if you have the top tips for anybody that really needs to start, start small and they really haven't done a lot yet. And then I'd like to move into people who have already done some stuff and already have a few things going. How can they expand it, scale it, get more exposure, whatever you talk about right. with that. I so. love it. What a great question. <laughs> Fantastic, Kathy. Um, so in, let's take the first one. Start small. You know, first of all, take one or two platforms. Just think about your target audience. Think about where they may be. That might take you an hour or two to just think about and do a bit of research. Think about where they may be. And it's usually, you know, a, a demographic, a, a psychographic. A, you know, there's always a few ways to, to look at things, but you can always find them. And if it might be Facebook and LinkedIn, right? So I would say, just work on those two platforms, put a post a day or two posts a day and just test the waters and just see how things go and just keep playing and getting used to it. You know, and, and, and the other thing I'll just remember, I'll just make sure everybody remembers this too, keep a copy of every single thing you do. Every little post, keep a copy. Every graphic, every video, back it up because you're going to be repurposing and recycling and using them as inspiration for other things and, you know, making top tens and whatever you want to do with them, chopping up big ones into small ones and expanding out small ones into big ones. So keep a copy. Don't just recreate the wheel every morning and then throw it away. That's insane. So definitely do that and just start small on a couple of platforms because you don't have time or you haven't reached that point yet where you're going to be working for two hours and hitting five, six places at the same time. Right? Perfect. Then as you get more mature in your process and more sophisticated, and you have some more time, and maybe you get a VA, you talk to Kathy, and you get a VA <laughs> to help you. Then you can start getting more sophisticated in your, in your production value and in your variety as well. So you might say, all right, now I'm going to start playing with video. I'm going to get better with video. I'm going to get more comfortable with video. Because as they say, in the next couple of years, social media content is going to be predominantly video content. So it's important to be comfortable with video. You know, you have to learn to look in, at the camera while you're talking, <laughs> et cetera. Even though today- we're You're really good at that, Darren. I have been noticing that. And I'm like, I need to get better at that because Darren is like staring right into my eyes and I'm liking it. <laughs> <laughs> like when I do a podcast, I go, I, I do a bit of both. But when you're doing a promo ad or you're talking to the, giving value to your audience, you must learn to just look straight at the camera the whole time and just have everything else in your peripheral vision. So, you know, Video is another, another way to continue to expand and get more sophisticated with your content. You might start working with audio graphics or audiograms, which are really fun nowadays. You might start getting more creative with Canva, that great product, the Australian product for free. And you can do amazing social media things with Canva. And as you get better, you can start getting more sophisticated with your variety of your offering and using more platforms. You might start putting on some Instagram. You might start playing with a podcast. You might start doing more on YouTube. You might go to uh, Twitter. Who knows what you want to do with, and what other platform there'll be in another year's time or TikTok or whatever. You know, <laughs> so it's really just about um, how much time you have and how, where you're at in that continuum of developing that skill. Yeah. So I, hope I love all of that. A, 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 bit of a, a bit of a roadmap but just don't, don't bite off more than you can chew. Start off small, learn slowly. Otherwise it all becomes too much and you choke. <laughs> yeah. And what I hear you saying is pick your top two, um, ideally by identifying where your clients hang out. And may I add in there, if you absolutely hate it and you're not going to be able to make yourself do it, don't choose that one right away. What do you think about that? So true. And, and that kind of brings as well, brings us back to using assistance if you need to. Like my, my philosophy around social media is ideally you should do it yourself, especially initially. You should learn the skill set and learn the psychology behind it. You really have to know what it means and how it feels. And you have to be a practitioner in the trenches. But then later on, if you are getting really busy and you don't have as much time, outsource it. You know, it's never going to be as good as if you do it, but it's better than not having not doing it at all. So if you don't like, or not it, being consistent it, with it, or not being consistent, so you might say, "I'll just stick to my two platforms and I'll outsource the other three platforms, or whatever." There's always a way to play. 
you know, so, you know, you can do that as well, you know, either don't do it or out, if you have the time and money outsource. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, here's my little secret, <laughs> which I out myself all the time on everything, Darren. So I never have any secrets for very long and everybody knows, everybody who knows me knows that, oh, of course she's going to tell whatever it is because she doesn't keep anything to herself. Um, I didn't even know what IG stood for. People, somebody would be like, are you on IG? And I'm like, what is it? <laughs> yeah. Instagram. And I'm like, that's IG? Why isn't it IN yeah. or IS? How does yeah. how's it IG? Yeah. So Grammy, I didn't. I'm a Grammy. <laughs> I'm a Grammy. Ah, so I didn't do anything with it for a really long time because I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to log into it. I didn't know it was IG. I thought it was something else. And then somebody started telling me about stories and I love stories. Yeah. So there's all, I feel like there's always some kind of little hook that could get me finally interested enough in something to go, Oh, now stories I like. Exactly. So let's do that. Exactly. And you know, yeah. you, you just got to learn, be inquisitive. You got to be curious. And if someone says something, oh, ask them what it is or go and look it up. You never know where it's going to lead. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you feel about Pinterest these days? Because that's one that I haven't gotten into because I felt like it was mainly recipes. But now people are telling me, no, it's images and you should be on Pinterest too. Yeah, that's a really good one. I haven't really done much with Pinterest either. Um, like Pinterest, funny enough, originally was really great for photographers. And, you know, there's great oh. images um, for photography on, on Pinterest. Um, so every now and then I'll go look at some images on Pinterest just to be inspired with the photo shoot that I'm going to do or a wedding or a function or whatever. But mm -hmm. a lot of people now are getting on Pinterest um, for as a social media platform for sharing content and building brand. So Pinterest is, is, is rapidly um, growing now. So, but, but oh, no that's so interesting because I felt like it was old. I'm like, oh, that's kind of an old thing. Yeah, But it's growing. Build their businesses and their brands on just Pinterest now. Wow. Yep, so it's well, for example, and you know, when you were saying kind of spend some time thinking about your target market and where they are and the other interests in their life is the one thing that I feel like I've kind of thrown by the wayside and shouldn't have, yeah. which is, you know, my target market has a lot to do with moms, right? Professional women who are moms who really want to work from home so they can spend more time with their family. Yep. And guess where they are? They're on Pinterest looking at those recipes that I'm like, well, I don't do recipes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I love that you said that because you know, that's a, re a really great example of showing people how to think laterally to find your target market and to find um, areas where your audience might be. If you are a chef and you want to put stuff about recipes, don't just put stuff on groups or pages that are about recipes and whatnot. Think about where those who might eat those recipes and they might be in a totally different place you know or use referral partners that might work that other people that might need recipes might also need tablecloths or cutlery or what you know there's it, if you think laterally it's amazing where that where it will take you and like you were talking area. about before like you were talking about before, all the content that you've created, all the imagery that you've created for the other channels that you started with can all be repurposed definitely. for the other. Definitely, definitely. 100%. You know, you know, yeah. Again, you know, to, to recreate the wheel every single morning when you're just getting up and put on so much content is near impossible. You don't have the time unless you have a creative team. So you find a system that allows you to go through this process of recycling, repurposing, being creative with things, and also adding new stuff when inspiration hits. It's like a content machine and you've got to build mm. this content machine and it's going to run every day. That's the, that's the key. I love that. So I would love your opinion on th third party programs that can automate social media, like social B or any of the other millions of them. I, there's not yeah. literally millions, but it feels like there are. What do you think about those? What's the status on that? Good question. There's two schools of thought in this. Like, like I, my view is I like to do it myself every morning because it allows me to keep my finger on the pulse 
and know exactly what I've done yesterday. So for example, I mentioned that variety is important. So if I've just been doing a lot of video content for the last couple of days, I don't want to go and put more video content. I want to try and come at them from another direction. I might start doing some small written posts or a couple of pictures or, you know, uh, a, a quote or a, gra or a graphic or something else, not just video. So then I know I can keep track of what I'm doing every day and I can keep keeping people guessing. I can keep coming at them from a different direction. <laughs> And, what's and he gonna I'll, do today? Yeah, like what's he gonna do today? Ooh, it's Play like, the oh, guitar God. for us today. Exactly. I'm still waiting for that guitar to come out. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tune it. <laughs> but if you don't, if you don't do that and use a scheduler, you, you you lose track of your of the tone of what you've been doing, and you also lose track of where the world is at at that particular time. So you know, a great example is COVID. You know, if someone scheduled something a year ago the tone of where the world is at right now is very different to what it was a year ago. Those messages might be, might fall totally incorrectly and actually do damage to your brand because they're, they're all about, you know, whatever. And people don't have a lot of money or they don't have a lot of time or they have pro different priorities. Now they want to learn different things. So those messages were totally irrelevant. So it's really important if you are going to use a scheduler to just schedule only a week or two or a month in advance and keep, Keep that tight so you can keep your, eye, your finger on the pulse. I think that's the key. You know, some schedulers are great. I prefer personally to do it on my own. But if you are going to use a scheduler, just keep it tight. Keep it a week or two in advance. Don't go scheduling six months in advance because you can lose mm -hmm. sight of what's going on. And, and Darren, you are so right right now. That is more important than ever. In fact, even a month out, if you're not really on top of what's going on, I will yeah. tell you that. Um, I think it was when George Floyd was murdered, I had something that I did not realize. I didn't even think I've already scheduled this whole month and there's stuff that's going to go out tomorrow that while, you know, it, it wouldn't have been rude or anything. It just wasn't going to fit in with the atmosphere. Yep. And one thing did go out that, and it, you know, it wasn't the end of the world, but it was not at all on tone that I wanted. Yeah. And so I really fast said, cancel everything else we have set up to go out. I've got to re redo everything. Um, and, and we were able to do that. One marketer that I follow, he had a big sales push that went out that very next day. He literally yeah. put out an apology after that and said, there I am so sorry. So yeah. true. See, exactly. And, and, you know, while I'm listening to you, I mean, I'm thinking to myself as well. People forget that social media is now just basically a communications channel. It's like the news. It's like mainstream, it's becoming mainstream communication. So <clears throat> you have to be relevant and pertinent to what's happening in the world. You know, you have mm -hmm. to mirror the tone of the world and you have to be mm -hmm. on top of that every single day. So if you schedule too far in mm -hmm. advance, it's crazy. You're totally out of touch. That is so true. Just something else popped in my head, then it went right back out. <laughs> when you were, when you're, oh, I know what it was. Do you have the most recent stats? And I don't know them off the top of my head, but they're absolutely amazing on the, on the percentage of people that the only place they get their news now is social media. The only place. There you go. I don't have the stats, but in my, in my, um, um, example that's me too I, I never watch the news i never read the newspaper i get it all from social media or from my family or friends that just say oh by the way did you hear about this nowhere else you know because that's where i am every day that's where i live and i don't have yep. you know, i don't have the time or the energy to even start doing all the other stuff so that's where i get my I think information. It, and all you guys can look it up and comment below and say hey here's the number but i'm thinking it's something crazy like 70 percent that's where they get yep. all of their news. I wouldn't be surprised. You know? and yeah. Look at all. Yep, absolutely. So true. So if that's where they're getting all of their news, 70%, think about how much time they're spending there. And it is just astronomical these days, how much time people spend on social media. It's more than anywhere else. Yeah. And if you're not out there, if you're not doing this consistently, if you're not branding yourself the way Darren has been talking about, Darren, tell us how they can work with you. Oh, to have and and I love your whole plan because I feel like you are are calm. You have a 
have a more simple way. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, in a clear streamlined way, not something really complex because so many people these days make it so complex and you don't do that. So tell us a little bit about somebody listening to this going, wow, I want to work with Darren. I want to know more about how to work with them. Thank you. Actually on that, like on my website, if people jump on my website, which is just www.suspendedanimation.com.au. You go into a tab under social media training and I've got a a list of 10 um, steps for people just to follow if they're really getting started with social media. And it just goes one to nine. And number 10 says, start at number one and do it all again. And if you just follow that (laughs) process, you will already be in the zone of, of working in the way that we're talking. So it's a really, you know, a little bit of a benefit for people. So jump on my website. Um, and then there's links on my website, of course, to all my other channels, all my social media, um, my training courses. I do training courses. I do one-on-one consulting sessions, strategy sessions, um, always with me, either in person or on Zoom, depending on where you are. Um, and uh, obviously you can learn a lot from the podcasts that we do as well, because I collaborate with lots of people like Kathy and others who talk about all these kind of great things. So really just jump on my website, suspendedanimation.com.au, and you can go to everything from there, even my podcast. That's awesome. And we will include um, that link in our show notes. So everybody can uh, just click on that. And you just said you've got that. That's free on your site? That's, yeah, that's free. That's just a little, that's like on my one that's of my awesome. pages. And people can say, all right, I'm going to follow this process from one to nine. And then when they get to number 10, they say, all right, let's go to number one. Let's do it again. I love it. And it just keeps it nice I love and it. easy, nice and simple. So if you're brand new, no matter where you are in your business, if you're like, I, I just started a business, I don't have any money to spend on social media. Hey, yep. cool. It's free. Go do that. And then as you grow your business, learn more from Darren, work with Darren. Do you work with people all over the world? Like I'm, I do. I'm assuming you asked since you were talking with me. <laughs> yeah, you bet. I, I mean, I love working with people from all over the world. Um, you know, I've, I've um, consulted with people. I do some speaking to different events and I'm on podcasts all the time with different people around the world. And I just, as I mentioned before, I love meeting people. I love collaborating. I love learning and uh, happy to work with anybody. Okay. You just intrigued me speaking at events. Tell me more about that. Yeah. So, I mean, nowadays um, with in the last six to 12 months or six months in particular, there's been more and more virtual events because a lot of people aren't doing um, face-to-face events. So every now and again, I get mm-hmm. an opportunity to speak about social media and podcasting um, at a social media conference. I just was speaking at the um, European Digital Week um which is a couple of months ago and that was amazing a lot of fun and i've done a little uh, speaking event in trinidad tobago to a, a, a group that was learning about how to build their business using social media and podcasting and i'm always open to you know speaking and um, talking about my favorite topics so if anybody ever wants me to do that please feel free to reach out i'd love to do that for you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Darren. And uh, you can tell how articulate Darren is. And not only is he incredibly knowledgeable on this, but he is fun and interesting and entertaining. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like boring speakers. (laughs) I want somebody fun who's going to laugh. And yes, teach me something, but help me have fun too. And Darren, you are all of that. Uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Try to try to do it in a fun way and put a bit of my energy into it, but give people something that they can use. That's the key as well. And you do have amazing energy. I'm here, I'm sure you hear that all the time. So, um, Darren, thank you so much. I could talk to you all day long. Um, You have tons of great tips. Anybody who's thinking about, hmm, how do I get going on social media or how do I scale my social media bigger? Or I tell you what I'm into right now, Darren, I, I'm, I'm into how big can I get? Can I become the brand authority in my industry? Definitely. And, do you and, help and people podcast, do that too? Definitely. And a podcast is gold for that. Podcasts allow <laughs> you to brand yourself as an authority and give you the credibility as a thought leader. And that allows you again to, to move to speaking events and, you know, getting on the stage, virtual stage, even if it is. Uh, because you are mm-hmm. an authority and you're always 
seen as that person talking about that particular area of interest. So podcast, that's why I can't stress enough how powerful podcasting is these days. It's incredibly powerful. And if somebody wants to learn how to get their podcast started, how to do all that podcasting stuff, you can help them with that also. I do, yes. So that's on my website as well. So really basic training courses um, you know, over three sessions, very cost effectively. I can get you started with your own podcast. I show you how to prepare for it, produce it and promote it. And you're up and running. The three P's, prepare, three produce, P's. promote. I love it. Three P's of podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and oh. again you make it sound easy and it is. because it really is it's not, it's not hard at all you know, yeah in, in these days with the technology you know and all the microphones we have as you mentioned we were talking about this before these microphones are mm -hmm. so cost effective you know you have oh my a gosh. camera you have a couple of lights and you're up and running for a couple of hundred dollars you have a podcast you have a mm -hmm. studio yeah. oh. uh, i actually had rented a studio um, before COVID and thank goodness I only did a one year lease because um, I was like, yeah, that was a good idea before COVID. And now I don't want to go anywhere. I just yeah. want to stay here. Stay here so yeah. I moved everything home and I'm thinking, why didn't I do that to begin with? Why did I make it so complex? Yep. So true. And you know, everybody's learned so much through this process and it's only going to continue in that vein. People are going to be working more yeah. and more from home, using technology, doing more virtual work. So set yourself up at yeah. home, very cheap, and you've got the best quality um, technology to really become a communications um, practitioner. So Darren, um, I, I, I hope that others are listening to this message that you're sharing, which is if you have even thought one little tiny bit, hmm, wonder if I should do a podcast, the answer is yes. Hell yeah. And Darren can help you get started. And let me tell you, to me, it's incredibly valuable to have somebody like Darren who's already done the deep dive into it, who knows the best equipment that the best value and what you really need and don't need, because there's a whole lot of money you can spend on stuff you don't need. Right. You, can spend, <laughs> you can spend so much money and you don't need it at all. It you don't need it. It actually takes up space that you don't have. <laughs> yeah. I live in a 500 square foot tiny house. I don't have room. Exactly. <laughs> yeah Keep it simple. Keep uh, it That's the key. yeah and i know for sure that somebody with your expertise can actually save them money um even if they pay to work with you because you know the tips and tricks to do things the least expensive with the big the biggest punch so i hope everybody can tell i think you should reach out to darren learn more about him visit his website and sign up subscribe to his podcast his YouTube channel because he put he goes live on on there with his podcast and uh, Darren, I think I, I might be uh, one of your biggest fans now. Oh, Kathy, you're the best. I'm <laughs> one of your biggest fans. Thank you so much. It's been really such a pleasure to chat with you, and you've made it so easy and light and conversational. And we've really got into some really we've done a deep dive into some great aspects of yeah the great tips world of social media and podcasting. So. Hopefully yeah. that's given people a lot of value and feel free to people. Anybody can connect up with me on LinkedIn and on Facebook and wherever else. Cause I put out lots of content for free every day where you can learn more and more about this stuff. And you know, that's, that's, that's my thing. And it's really good stuff that he shares too. Now, Darren, I'm going to go. I always like to take one step too far. So I'm going to take one step too far here. <laughs> Don't ask me to put on. Are you scared? Down. Are you scared? Oh, I have sent tiaras to guys. Let me tell you, <laughs> we may have to do that. Um, it, you just, you know, you're, you've got your guitars in the background. I'm constantly looking at them. So would you be up for a challenge if we get, let's say 20 people who post in the comments on the YouTube of this or in the comments of the podcast for this and say, we want Darren to play his guitar. All right. I'll do my best. I'll, I'll, I can, I'm a little rusty, but. If you get enough people that ask for it, I'll put together something and I'll put a little video together and I'll share it with you with pleasure. Oh, awesome. So everybody, post in the comments wherever you're listening to this. We want to hear Darren play the guitar. <laughs> That's a first. I love it. <laughs> we want a concert from Darren. Yeah, I love it. <laughs>
<laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you for playing along, Darren. Well, I really appreciate oh, my it. My pleasure. My pleasure. And it's all part of the fun. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.